Which country? Uh, oh, Apple Store. Apple Band Flappy Bird? It's already not in Apple Store. Apple store. Uh, long ago, like yeah. it came out for like a month or two and that. Uh, what lesson are we on? Electric field like strength? Like, yeah. And we're in the middle of it? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Yeah, no, I can put my laptop in. Okay, fine, so put Flappy Bird clone away, please. Here you go. How much sale? Discount supplement, 50% off. But from London, you can. Yeah, but like 60% off. Oh. What was the last thing you wrote down? Oh, you're going to take it back with you. Uh, I think it's back. I'm leaving one of my things here, yeah? Oh, you wrote that down? Oh. Can I use some shots to sell it? I'm not like the building. Me, so I have my big luggage. Oh, I think that's no, no, like if I had that is it this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it this yeah. one? Yeah. And we have a look at our and first did example. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you do any examples? Right. No. No. So this is our yeah. first one. Okay, then maybe this is the whole family. Dude! <laughs> We're continuing from the last lesson. This is our first example from the last lesson where I gave you two formulas for electric field strength. One for the plates and one for the points. What? I got two. One for the point and one for the plate. <laughs> That's the physics version. Right, can you write or draw this, please? Potential difference. Yeah. You're asking questions you know the answer to. Please, please, can you write or draw this? We're going to do this from now. I'm not asking you to do it, I just want you to write or draw it so that I can do it. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Right. Yeah? Okay. So, this is the situation. We have two plates. Uh, we'll put the positive one on the top and the negative one on the bottom. And we have the positive charge which is falling. We want to know how long does it take to hit the bottom plate. So what forces are acting on this charge? Well, there's two forces. Gravity. Gravity and then the electric field is pulling it, uh, pushing it away, actually. So there's two forces going down. So we have a force from the field, I'll call it F1, and then a force from gravity. So we want to add those two together. So the total force, which is MA, well, the force from gravity, that's just MG. And the force from the electric field is QE. Now, what is the electric field strength for plates? Do you remember? V over D, yes. Yeah, so that would be Q V over D. Okay, let's put in the info. Uh, well, I kind of, I think I want the A here. So that would be G plus Q V over M D, which would be 9.81 plus, and then the Q, I think I said, was a lot of electrons, 10 to the 10 electrons. The voltage is 200. The mass is half a milligram. Now just be careful here. Half a milligram is half uh, 10 to the minus 6 kilograms, isn't it? Yeah. No, but kilograms, not grams. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, so that will be 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6, and the distance is a centimeter. Oh, sorry, you can't see. Um, is there any way you could make that a little bit higher? Maybe if you pull it back a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can see what, what's steady It's fine, it's fine. Well, what can we not see? There, at a second level. It's getting serious now. Oh. And don't kill yourself in the process, mm -hmm. please. Back from Sylvia. Thank you. Yeah, you're ruining it. Oh, it's falling apart. Is it too high? No. Turn the wheel. You can never be too high. What? Yeah, right. That's good. <laughs> oh, you're making a dog's dinner of this. So stop dancing in class. Now, let's calculate this. 9.81, 9.81, 9 9.81 plus fraction. Uh, what number is E, did we say? 23, wasn't it? Yeah. Zero point five times ten to the power of minus six times zero point zero one. So I get an acceleration of seventy three point nine meters per second squared. Yeah, I got the same answer. No, you didn't. <laughs> now, I wanted probably the time to hit the plate, I'd say. Um how long would it take? Yeah. U, zero, V, we don't know. A, we're making minus 73.9. T, we don't know. And S, we'll make it minus 0 0.01. Which is going down. S equals UT, which of course is zero. Then a half A, a T squared. So then the T would be 0 0.02. Over seventy three point nine square root. Yeah. So that's square root fraction zero point zero two over my answer, and the time is not long. I'll put in milliseconds. I think sixteen point five milliseconds, and that's the answer. Okay. So if you can write that example down, please. I think I have everything on the screen. I do. <coughs> Not sure. Broke it. You don't want to go. <laughs> you want to go back to the old school? This doesn't break. Did you try the same with yourself? I did. Yeah, but that just adds to the style. More than key? Vintage. Well, one of my friends had a... Quality. Like, uh, had a Samsung phone, and it had like a touch screen, and it wasn't great. It was like... The it's old school. Yeah. See, they make them to break, so you have to buy a new one. It's, yeah. it's basic business. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to get much money out of you if it never breaks. See, they didn't know that start when they were making phones, but now they realize, wait. Hey. You know there was a light bulb in England? In England, the mm. fire department. Mm -hmm. Oh, that hasn't gone out over yeah, 40 years or something. Yeah, and there is a camera that's monitoring this, only this light bulb. So that whenever it goes off, the whole world will know. <laughs> but it's been on for the past, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe it'll do another 40. It's weird how things like that happen. Okay, uh, next example. I'm sorry, do you have this one written down? Yeah. Uh, next example. So, this one, I'll let you try it first. Um, 
It's not as difficult as the last one. You have an electron, it's two millimeters from three protons. What is the force felt by the electron? So you want to use your formula F equals QE. Uh, but what's different here is the E, you need to use the other formula for E, which I gave you last time. K, Q, or R? No, no. Not that one, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's K, Q, 1, Q, 2 over R squared. Not quite. Q1 and Q2 are multiplied. Say what? Yes. Your fire is going out, man. Just so you know, guys, I have three more exams this week Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, yes, but I'll arrange another class to take with you. You know when, when you can arrange those classes? What? Do you know when? No. Like what's a good day to do it? I, uh, I'll have to look at the timetable. No, no. What's a good day? After the 21st of July. Yeah. Like Columba. <laughs> <laughs> have you done this question? Yes. Yeah. Now, the test I have on Friday is the math test on my computer course, oh which I suspect I could probably get done in 12 minutes and then leave the room laughing and then go to class as normal. <laughs> 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 and do you know they'll be the ones laughing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the, the math test is basic enough math. I think the most difficult thing on it is uh, getting the inverse of a matrix. Do we do that? No, you don't. The stuff that you do, that I'll be doing on Friday, sign rule, cosine rule. They teach this at university? Well, on a computer class. Because people's background wouldn't be maths, you know. Yeah, so like I said, I'll give it 12 minutes and then I'll see you in class. Wait, so we finish after this lesson? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm skipping it. Yeah. If you yeah. didn't use your hours yeah. asking it. Do you have an answer here yet? It's just our class that's attending the AAC and the SAP class. Okay. okay, our class is like one student or two students to do the AAC and the SAP. Why so? Why so? Come on, give me an answer. After this is the SAP class trouble. Go classroom. Come on, dudes, answers. I so I want an answer. Do you have a calculator? I want the right answer. <laughs> answer, please, Lee. Let's see then. Thank you, Lee. We'll just give your classmates a minute, okay? Millimeter is minus four. Two, three. Three, and you know that. Yeah, this. Uh, Testing, Lee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Some things just can't be unheard. Right, do we have answers? I know you have an answer, Lee, and it's probably right. <laughs> probably. Uh, I'm not liking all this page turning and thinking. <laughs> Three. Yes. Three protons. Did you do one proton? Then you multiply your answer by three. Two point three seven. All right, let's have a look. So what have we got? We've got an electron, and then we've got three protons. And there's a force here, and I want to know what this force is. So what's the formula for force in a field? QE. And what's the formula for E? Uh, K. Q1, Q2 over R squared. Now please be careful, this is the Q1 and this is the Q... Oh sorry, no you haven't seen that formula. Pretend you didn't see that. 
kq over r squared. And now what you have to be careful about here is that this q here is for the electron, whereas this one here in the formula is for the protons. So I'll just write q1 and q2 here, like that. So, uh, electron, that's an E. K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9, I think. Q2 is 3 electrons again. And the OR is, I think, uh, 2 millimeters. And that needs to be squared. So, actually, you know what? I can clean that up a little bit more because that will be 3 times electron squared times 8.99 times 10 to the 9 over 2 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. So let me see, that's 3 times um, electron squared times 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9. Fisolius. Is this what you got, Lee? Yeah. 1.73 times 10 to the minus 22 newtons. Okay, write that down. Did you get that? No. Why is the one inside the bracket, the Q inside the bracket for the photon, the other one is for the electron? Because Why is it that way around? Yeah. Because the formula F equals QE that's the charge that's in the field. And in this formula for the E, that's the charge that's caused in the field. In this case, the protons. So they both have the same value? No, because one is three times the other. Oh, yeah. Because one so and three are oh, different numbers. Oh, yeah. Okay. But the sign, I've, I've already considered the sign by the direction that I drew the force. Well, I have the force pointed to the protons instead of away from the protons. No, because the sign is your choice. Because you can say positive is towards and negative is away. It's your choice. But to prevent any confusion, I have it drawn in the diagram. Really, the force should be negative. Because it's usual to measure the distance out from the protons here at the origin. But if you really want to, I can write in here towards protons. Better? Lee, Lee is no firing your gun in class. Thank you. Continue? Continue. I'm hungry. Right. Um, let's start these questions. You don't be put off. Don't be put off by all the words. Question one is actually kind of just a lot of short, straightforward questions, and number two is just like my example. It's number three. That's the interesting one. So we'll take turns. Let's start with number one. So if you can do number one here. Why should you bring your laptops? Uh, oh yeah, I said in the tutorial. Uh, Friday's tutorial day. <coughs> As Fuang would tell you. Where is Fuang actually? <laughs> now half of that is true. <laughs> she'll hear this. <laughs> and she'll beat you up. And you know something? Let's She'll win. Her She'll win. Because social rules prevent you from fighting back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's of course what they say. Although you don't go by normal social rules. <laughs> no, let's do it. 50 50. 50 50. Alright, try number one, please.
Uh, and just knowing the question, it's one electron around one proton. So it's your basic hydrogen atom for all of question one. And I think we'll do it A, B, C, D, like, so just, I just want the A part now, please. Bye, so give me the answer for the A part, please. Give me the right answer for the A part and write something down in your notebook that produces the right answer. Please, <coughs> and do it now. Did we do integrating improper functions, uh, partial functions? Did we do it? Like the device. I'm sure we did. I didn't find the video. Really? Mm. I'm sure I've uploaded it. I, know, I found the proper one. Not improper? No. Maybe it's in the same video. Yes. Yeah. Are you finished? Come on, it's a short question. Give me the answer. <coughs> Lee, do you have the answer in the calculator? Uh, Why? Do you, you copy? Guys, the first question is just a proton, an electron, and I want to know how strong the electric field is at the electron's location caused by the proton. And you have a formula for that. I used it today and in the last class. I want to know how strong the field is here. Come on. Go back to the Oh, yes. What's the constant for the electron? 8.99 multiplied 10 power 9. Whoa, big number! I got 14.4. Newtons per coulomb? 14.4 times 10 to the power 8. Let's see! So, the formula is 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 times fraction Q, which in this case, because it's a proton, because it's a proton, that's just E, and uh, the distance squared, and the distance is 10 to the power of minus 10, and you are both wrong. Congratulations. The correct answer is 1.44 times 10 to the 11. No, I said 14. Ten to the eight. You did say eight. You did say eight. But you said eight. My brain is too much for my eyes. I know what you said. You said eight. Okay. B. So we have 1.44 times 10 to the 11 newtons per coulomb for the first one. Okay, second part now, what is the force experienced by the electron from the proton's field? Give these slow pokes a chance. For the force, yeah. correct. Okay. So, what is the force of the proton? That is the question. The force, no, no, the force on the electron from the proton. Yeah, what is the? Q from the proton. E. It's the same as an electron, oh, wow. and you know that. Oh, really? Yes, you do know that, and really. Okay, then. Two point three. Negative what? 
Ten. You're on the record of saying negative ten. You can't change that later now. Oh, hundred and twenty. Okay. Huh? Minus We shall see. So the formula is F equals QE. And the E we have from the previous answer. So we just multiply this answer by E. <laughs> minus 8 it is. 2.31 times 10 to the minus 8. Newton. It's okay, Faisal. We all have bad days. Everything that you said. Like the answer that I gave you was from your second. So somehow you're trying to blame this on me? No, not going to fly. You all got the right answer? Yeah, that's right. Blaming, blaming the calculator and the teacher. That's desperate. Desperate. Right, what is the acceleration experienced by the electron? So now what is the acceleration? Don't give up. Quitters give up. Answer, Lee? What is the mass of the... You have it in your notebook. Really? And you also have it on your calculator. No, 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 no. He has to learn for himself to do things. Okay. Yeah, it is. That's the mass of the proton. <coughs> yeah, usually add yeah, from Yeah. So That's that constant three. Right, we have an answer? Yes. So, F equals MA, yes. so A equals F over M. Well, we have the F from the previous one, uh, so we just have to divide by the... Oh, divide by the mass of the electron, which is constant number 3, and we get 2.53 times 10 to the 22. No. no, Newton will do it just fine here. Right, D. What is the periodic time of the orbit? Uh, oh. <coughs> uh, 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 two pi over root A over one. Yes, from last class. T equals two pi over omega. Yeah. Uh, we don't know the omega, but we have the formula F equals M omega squared or. So omega squared <coughs> is equal to <coughs> FM over or. So if I square root that, I get my answer 2 pi over root FM over or. Now the thing is, we know the F that was answered for... We know the FM which is acceleration. So I'm not just Since when does F FM equal A? <laughs> Thank you, Lee, for giving me something helpful. Omega squared equals F over M or. Correct? Which is? Yes. That's A over or. So omega is root A over or. So this is 2 pi root or over A. That program's acceleration. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, um, two, come on, two pi square root fraction, what was the acceleration? Oh, it was the previous answer, wasn't it? 10 power minus 10. What's the radius? No, I must have typed, my previous answer must no longer exist. Uh, 2.53 times 10 to the power of 22. 
No, still wrong. Because I typed it, I did a Faisal and typed the fraction in upside down. Classic Faisal mistake for this question. No, because you took the fraction to the right side, that's why you flipped it. No, I should have OR over A. I had A over OR. So I should have 10 to the minus 10 on the top and 2.53 times 10 to the power of 22 on the bottom. That's a better. Uh, 3.96 times 10 to the minus 16. What the heck? Huh? Yeah. I, yeah. Out of ink, yeah. This digital ink is so expensive these days. Right, ask the answer here. What was the acceleration? 2.53 times the mm -hmm. negative 22. No, plus the 22 I got. No, that's way too small. The acceleration should definitely be a big number because it's zipping around the uh, proton really fast. Okay, and the R is... 10 to the minus 10. Okay, okay, why am I not getting this? this what did you get? <coughs> 1.5. Yeah. Yeah. Times ten to the power negative fifteen. I typed it in right here, didn't I? Two pi. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Pi three ten. Yeah. I did two pi over root. Two point five three over ten. So it should be the same thing. Cause you have it double over. I don't like this 10 button you use, it really annoys me. Now, if I get the right answer by not using my 10 button, I'm banishing you from ever using it again. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I think you typed in 10 twice. 3.95 times 10 to the minus 16. I didn't use your stupid 10 button. Okay, I think you used it. And I think what you did when I was back facing, I think you had like, which one is the 10 button? I think you had something like this type in. Oh, dangerous. Yeah, so don't use that stupid 10 button. All right. E. E. What's the electric field strike at the proton's location caused by the electron? So this time, here's the proton, and here's the electron. And, um... Oh. So how strong is the field at the proton's location? Very strong. But you realize uh, everything is the same, so this is the same as the answer you got uh, in part A. Because all the numbers are the same. Um, and the same deal for the second part, isn't it? Same as B, what's the force? Because in the second part you use the formula F equals QE. Is the Q the same? Yeah. Proton is the same as the electron. And um, is the E the same? Yeah, so it's the same. So the only thing that's different now is G, the acceleration. Now the acceleration won't be the same. And the reason it's not the same is because in the formula the M is different now. So will the answer be bigger or smaller? Well, the M is bigger, so the answer will be smaller. And um, what did I get for the force earlier? Can someone give it to me? What did I get for the force earlier? 2.31 times. And then I'll put this over the mass of the proton, which is constant number one. And this time we get... 1.38 times 10 to the 19. What did I get last time? So it's about a thousand times smaller, which is a thousand... I'm only looking at the order of magnitude. A thousand times smaller. Three orders smaller. This explains why the electron orbits the proton and not the other way around. It's only because of the mass difference. Because everything else is the same. The electric field strength is the same. The force is the same. So why is it the electron goes around the proton and we never see the proton go around the electron? 
because the acceleration of the electron is a thousand times bigger than the proton. So actually the proton is affected by the electron. It's just it's a thousand times smaller, so we don't really see it. But what's happening, which you can't really see, is the electron orbits the proton, but the electron is pulling on the proton as it orbits. It's a thousand times smaller, so um, you do get what you might call as kind of a, a wobbling. The proton isn't stationary. It's moving back and forth. And this is easier to see on a bigger scale. When you look at a, the Sun and the Earth, later we'll learn that there's a similar thing going on, where there's a force here. The Earth is pulling on the Sun, and uh, the Sun is pulling on the Earth. But why is it that the Earth goes around the Sun? Well, again, because of the mass difference. But the Earth still has an effect on the Sun. So, in fact, if you were to look at the orbit, we pictured this in our minds, but really what's happening is the Sun is also orbiting a little point here as the Earth also orbits it. So the Sun isn't actually stationary. It's orbiting a little point which is just on the edge of its... Uh it's not like a stationary in our galaxy. No, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, we don't. We picture the sun as being a fixed point in the center. It's orbiting a fixed point because all the other planets are pulling it out and putting it into a small circular orbit as well. But anyway, um, there's still two more to do, and I think you should be okay doing number two. Number three will be a bit tricky, and unfortunately, number three was an exam question. You will do now. You all heard that? Lee will do number three. You will do it for us next time. You will? And also do it. Huh? We'll do it together. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, I don't think he needs anything. Alright. I mean, I mean, I'm going to He wants to freeload off of Lee's awesomeness. He's a moocher. <laughs> do you know this word? No. It's very American. You know freeloading? Freeloading? Yeah. Like, like leeching off of someone else's greatness. Yeah. Taking credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, what word would you use? Uh, <laughs> Draculating. Yes. Yes. Leech, Draculating. What's that? My eraser. Omg. I think. I think Draculating is a good place to finish the class. <laughs> oh, we're done. It's a single class only.